Last week, I hosted an event where five YouTubers came together to discuss the future borders of Europe following the devastation of the Napoleonic Wars. The five of us were me, playing as Russia, rewriting history as Austria, Videntis as France, Ripped Lincoln as Britain, and because the final YouTuber couldn't make it, my friend Marklin, who filled in as Prussia. We all came into the Congress with certain goals that we wanted to achieve, and while we started off with some serious discussions, it quickly descended into complete chaos, as Europe got carved up by five very power-hungry great powers. So, as we sat down to discuss the future of Europe, Prussia and France weren't shy in staking their claims. If anyone wants to come out swinging with a proposal, please do. Uh, France should get the Southern Netherlands. <laughs> I disagree. Know. That is a banger. Concur, concur. <laughs> I disagree. Prussia should get all of Poland. Now this immediately presented an issue for Russia. Russia's only goal in this Congress was to get as much of Poland as possible. Now obviously, should Prussia be successful instead, this would become significantly more difficult. So, in addition to the two proposals already on the table, Russia added that no, they instead should be the ones to control all of Poland. With that, the first round of negotiations could begin. Now very early on, Britain and France had negotiated a secret alliance, and Britain immediately linked the two issues of the Southern Lowlands and Russian Poland together. <laughs> no. Well, listen, <laughs> if you want our consent to this, I mean, Britain's consent to this, you need to at least agree to uh, condition, we will condition this on France receiving the Southern Netherlands. Wait, AKA Britain wants France to receive the Southern Netherlands? Yes. Oh. By agreeing to do both proposals together, three out of the five great powers already agreed. The way proposals were passed is that if four out of the five great powers could come to an agreement, it would happen. So we needed the fourth vote, which would be Austria. Russia would agree to let Austria take some minor territories, so they would sign off on the Russian annexation of the rest of Poland. Still, they were hesitant about French expansion in the West, but would be convinced. You are willing to give all of Belgium up, but you will owe me a concession, like both of you, France and the UK. Right after France and Britain agreed to owe a favor, they exchanged this very simple, but very telling conversation over the apps. This shows that you should never trust a diplomat on their word, but the French annexation of the Lowlands was agreed upon, and so our first two border changes of the Congress have taken place. Next up, what do we do with Germany? The Holy Roman Empire was destroyed during the Napoleonic Wars, and the great powers had conflicting opinions on what's next. Uh, we should create the German Confederation. We should create the yeah. HRU. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those are two very different proposals. Now this issue was very dear to Austria's heart. The Austrian delegate had submitted a 14-point plan for the future of Europe, and chief among those points was that the HRE must be restored. But, kind of a big deal, Prussia was opposed to restoring the HRE. Austria would attempt to resolve the issue by force. Oof. Yeah, I'm gonna declare war on you if you don't agree with the HRE. <laughs> I'm bigger than you, I'm more powerful than you. Prussia is on my side. Luckily, cooler heads prevailed in the end, but still, two great powers supported the HRE, and two great powers supported the German Confederation. Any decision was impossible unless one of the two great powers switched sides. Again, the Austrian delegate had woken up and chosen violence. I declare war on Britain. <laughs> we are. <laughs> let's, let, let us not preemptively start yeah, a war. Let, let's keep it cool for as long as possible. <laughs> But, in order to actually break the impasse, and also prevent an Austro-Anglo war, the French delegate had a great idea. <laughs> I want up to the right if I'm supporting neither one. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> Surprisingly, this idea didn't get much international approval initially. The Prussian delegate had their own idea of how to solve the deadlock. I will consent to the Holy Roman Empire out of condition and give it a new name, the German Confederation. But that proposal too failed to gain any international traction. Eventually, the British were convinced by getting a larger Hanover. This makes three great powers agreeing, and to prevent the French from leveraging their vote to gain the entire West Bank of the Rhine, Prussia would also give their thumbs up to the HRE, which gives us four votes and results in the restoration of the empire. The next issue on the agenda is added by the British, who for seemingly no reason at all, called for the independence of Venice. 
This was completely unacceptable to the Austrian delegate, who saw the entirety of Italy as their natural domain, considering they are fellow Catholics. The Austrians loudly proclaimed this to the Congress, arguing that France doesn't count because they lost the war. The Russians and the Austrians proclaimed their discomfort with an independent Venice, considering that it seemed like an explicitly anti-Austrian move. Then the Russian delegate decided, if Austria can get Italy on religious grounds, then surely Russia could get the Balkan. So three issues were now on the agenda. Venetian independence, Austrian influence in Italy and Russian influence in the Balkan. After much discussion, Britain decided that Venetian independence was simply too much to demand and switched to demanding independence from Naples, with a slight expansion of the state. The rest of Italy would be put under Austrian domination, while France's vote was bought with Nice and Savoy. Russia would be awarded their influence in the Balkan, apart from Bosnia, which was annexed by Austria. Prussia just gave the thumbs up to the entire proposal to feel involved, another matter expertly solved. Sorry for the quick intermission, but by far most of you aren't subscribed. To keep up to date with the two videos I release every single week, consider doing so. Thank you. Next up, the tragic tale of the Dutch. They already didn't gain anything from Belgium, and all of their colonies are currently under British occupation. Luckily, the Austrian diplomat was ready to step up for the Dutch. I think that the Netherlands would be a great buffer between Prussia and France. Maybe it should be fair that the UK grants them back Indonesia and South Africa. But Britain had an amazing counter, demanding all of the Dutch colonies be kept for themselves. Britain argued that the Dutch should instead expand into Germany to become a stronger power. In light of this argument, the Austrian diplomat completely gave up on the idea of strengthening the Dutch. So the French and the British countered with a new plan. Okay, let's yes. just screw over the, the Netherlands. I disagree. <laughs> I, would, I would like my, my, my Rhineland. Now, French expansion up to the Rhine, as well as British annexations of the Dutch were on the table. The Prussian diplomat announced their support for the plan should they receive all of Northern Germany. After this, Austria inserted that they would like all of Southern Germany. Now technically, the four votes required to make all of this happen were already reached, but the Russian Tsar quickly inserted that they would really like to annex Thrace, including Constantinople. The British were not a fan. I mean, don't you guys worry that this would make Russia too powerful? But luckily for Russia, the other great powers did support them. It's... No way. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, thank you guys. Guys. <laughs> This would lead to an absolutely gigantic deal where with one stroke of a pen, Europe would never be the same again. So right now we have four proposals on the table. France expands uh, into the Rhineland. And in my mind, this is like all the lands west of the Rhine, their natural, natural boundaries. We all agree? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. The rest of the Netherlands, right. including their colonies, go to Britain. Yeah. Okay? Uh, okay. Prussia expands into northern Germany and Austria into southern Germany. Yes. Okay. Russia gets a trace. Now, I may be biased, but if this isn't perfect balance, I don't know what is. Then we leave the map for a bit, as Austria brings a brilliant proposal to the table. Hear me out, wait, so let me understand this. You want me to pay for damages that France caused to you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I strongly I disagree with that. that. Now before people even discussed this plan, Britain decided to rebrand the proposal. What about instead of reparations, I would support a financial aid package that would be distributed to Europe as a whole, minus the Iberian Peninsula. Whoa, fuck Spain I guess. All right. <laughs> and... This was seemingly done in an attempt to leave Iberia out of the plan specifically. Britain also proposed that the economic package should be administered by a separate organization, Operating from a neutral place, probably Switzerland. But upon hearing the name Switzerland, something seemingly went off in the mind of the Austrian diplomat. So okay. my question would go, what would happen to Switzerland? Since I guess we can, we can leave three nations alone. would claim them. We'll leave Switzerland as they are. Yeah, leave Switzerland alone. Okay, Prussia, don't you want some part of Switzerland or France? No, I have a better idea. You don't? Okay, what about France? France, don't you want something from Switzerland? I think that there are some French speakers, you know. And maybe you can... Wait, Switzerland being partitioned? 
I, I, I don't know yes. how this happens, yeah. but what? I thought I, I do not consent to this. I thought you were like, hey, I don't agree to that. All, <laughs> Switzerland is neutral. Hosting the EU I, and I thought they were going to be the capital. Yeah, I thought they were going to be the capital yeah. of, of our United Institution. Yeah, that's yeah, they're the capital of our new European country. Maybe we should support the Congress. Okay, who here is for the partition of Switzerland? But with nobody interested in partitioning the small state, Austria dropped these points. Here, we reach an important plot point for the Prussian delegate. They really wanted to establish a German confederation, but they had to back down in favor of the HRE. So, they were now trying to get anything to be named the German confederation. I propose we call this European Congress the German confederation. <laughs> They had also tried this with their puppet state in Western Germany. It makes them one puppet state called the, uh, I'll call the German Confederation. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> He's done it, folks. <laughs> but Austria had forced this state to be rebranded to the North German Confederation. Anyway, before a decision could be reached about any of these matters, the Prussian delegate attempted to redirect the Congress to some more interesting matters. Hey Britain, I have an idea that could benefit both of us. What is it? What if, and hear me out, we partition Scandinavia into spheres of influence between you and me? Hey, I totally agree with I this. I want to get involved. What? Dips on Sweden. So, there is now a new proposal on the table, dividing Scandinavia between Britain, Prussia and Russia. While all of this was being discussed, the French delegate interjected, asking if he could restore Napoleon II to the French throne, a vote which passed uncontested. This kind of ruined the idea that France lost the war, considering they not only expanded massively, but Napoleon's dynasty remained in power as well. Anyway, the Scandinavian vote. This would be the first vote where the great powers realized they only needed four votes. So Austria would not just be ignored, they would be screwed over in this vote. Austria suggested that they could support the partition of Scandinavia if they secured more influence in Italy. But three great powers had already signed off to partition Scandinavia, so only one of the two remaining powers was needed to agree. France jumped on this opportunity, suggesting this. I will support your proposal if you give me Sardinia. I mean, oh, actually, oh, oh yeah, that, that that's works. Generally. That's too much. That's too much. You, I feel like and we don't need Austria. We have four votes. Oh, true. Yeah. Oh shit. We can screw over I, Austria. I, I, I'm I'm up for uh, screwing over Austria if I get Sweden. I, I consent to this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With this, for the very first time, a great power had truly gotten screwed over, and now the gloves were off for the remainder of the Congress. But in terms of the map, like discussed. Scandinavia was partitioned, and France got awarded Sardinia. As a minor side deal, Austria wanted to negotiate the sale of Western Australia, arguing it's just a bunch of useless desert apart from Perth. Intense negotiations ensued. Okay, I don't get Western Australia. It's literally a desert, man. What are you Hey, it, it is Perth. Okay, you can have all of Western Australia except the area around Perth. <laughs> literally don't care, just take it. Okay. <laughs> Is it, you want it? The area yeah, except Perth? Uh, yes, I want it except Perth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, Austrian Australia was born. But looking at this map, Prussia realized that they had a terrible position in terms of expansion, and they went for a long shot. Because Prussia cannot get all Poland, I request that we take everyone in the Iberian Peninsula and move them out of Europe so we can settle as our manifest destiny. Prussia, you want to get Spain? Yes. Okay. Britain stated that they don't care as long as the Portuguese independence is respected, while the French diplomat countered that they too would like to own all of Spain. But France had a trick up their sleeve. It's called deception, threats, and misdirection. I would like Genoa. I, I wanna. Yeah. Oh, I would you, like Genoa. You would Genoa. like Genoa. I wanna. Yes. Okay. I want my I Italian land back. By discussing the possibility of further French expansion into Italy, Austria became very weary of losing influence and proposed this. Listen to me, France. I don't claim anything in Spain. So, I want to keep Genoa, just because. But I will support you with anything you do in Spain. Whoa. Literally, anything. I, I really don't give a fuck. I don't care. With this, 
France had gotten a great power vote without giving Austria anything. Britain, who was allied with France, was also fine to agree on the proposal. Now, only one more great power was needed, and France wasn't afraid to promise big things for a vote. Promising Russia, literally all of Anatolia for their vote, officially, to preserve the balance of power between France and Russia. But before anything could be resolved, Prussia entered with an interesting proposal. Uh, all, one, two, three, four, five, all five of us get together and do a multinational project for the benefit of all of us, where we dig a canal and the Franco-Spanish border can have to match right into the Atlantic. What? <laughs> What do, yeah. what, what do you mean a canal? There's already no, a there's canal. Canal. But, uh, Do you yeah. mean a bridge or? Wait, you... No, I can. You... I can now stick the canal through the border so that anyone can use. Through the Pyrenees. Through all these mountains. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can do that now. Really stretching but benevolent. Guys. Okay, yeah. I'm willing to do this if you pay for it. I have to admit, this talk about whether or not we can build a canal through the Pyrenees and other canal-related projects took way longer than I care to admit. But back to the main show. Spain and Anatolia were now linked. But Britain suddenly demanded that Portugal should get Morocco for some reason, which nobody really had a problem with. With the four necessary votes gathered, any semblance of balance in Europe was suddenly broken, with the two German states looking increasingly weak as time went on. By this point, the Congress got increasingly unserious, and a coalition of four, France, Britain, Prussia and Russia realized that they could steamroll the Congress without relying on Austria at all, with increasingly ridiculous proposals. First, the coalition felt bad that Austria got nothing in the Spain deal. So, the coalition votes to give Syria to Austria. Now I can't stress this enough, but Austria had absolutely no interest in gaining Syria. We should give Syria to Austria as well. <laughs> No, that's close to just give me that. I, I, <laughs> I think we should all force Syria on Austria. <laughs> no, that's close to just I, 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 agree. I agree with this. This is a punishment. Please don't do yes. it to me. I support it. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take Syria. Okay, you take Syria. No, no, no. I don't, I don't want them in Syria. I only want Austria and Syria. <laughs> yeah, I want Austria to have Syria. No, guys. Don't, <laughs> yes, don't do yes, we will. <laughs> yes, too. Uh, okay. Um, Wait, I thought you. Yeah. Austria, here, pressure, here, pressure. Austria gets Syria, supported by everyone apart from Austria? Question mark. I fucking hate you guys. <laughs> no, 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 no. France doesn't agree. Yes, UK, please save me. Or who is it? I think that the yeah. one know. person didn't agree. I was the one who suggested yeah. this. France, you disagree <laughs> with giving Austria Syria? France, please save me. I will, I will agree to it. You literally I gave you all the I'm. Literally gave you all of Spain. What do you mean? I just wanted some. Okay, so France allowance. would agree if they get Algeria and Tunis. I consent to this. I also. You I also consent. Yes. You motherfuckers. <laughs> I consent. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Done. Austria gets Syria. After the Syria dispute was solved, Austria began to argue that France was growing way too powerful reminding the Congress that France had lost the war. Austria, uh, I understand your concerns, and in uh, in exchange for you consenting to all of this without any more problems, you can have Iraq. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Just take Syria from me and give me the Mediterranean I want. Do you have a solution? Austria takes Iraq. Anybody else want to give Iraq to Austria or just me? No, please don't do it. <laughs> But seemingly nobody was interested in listening to this Austrian argument. After this, Austria brought up the creation of alliances, proposing an Austro-Prussian-Russian alliance, but these talks too went nowhere. So Prussia countered with an impassioned speech for an Anglo-Prussian alliance, with a couple of interesting suggestions for what it should be named. Why well, I see it, both Prussia and Britain are Christian. Yeah. Britain has German-speaking lands. Britain it speaks English. Yeah. English is a Germanic language, so therefore I post the military alliance and call it the German Confederation. <laughs> it's just an alliance though, it's not German. an actual confederation. Yeah, it's an alliance, but it's named the German sure. Confederation. <laughs> but it could not be the German Confederation, it needs to be the North German Confederation. Let's call it the Austrian, Austrian Confederation. <laughs> no, North German Confederation. Let's just Confederation. call it the Austrian Empire. <laughs> but after joking around about alliance names, 
Britain comes in with a banger of a proposal. Proposal to rename Austria to Turkey. <laughs> now obviously, everyone thought that this was hilarious, apart from Austria. I'm very sorry Austria. Realizing the diplomatic isolation that Austria had found itself in, they became further screwed over with each proposal. In exchange for Russia backing the proposal to rename Austria to Turkey, Russia demanded control over all of Austrian Galicia. But that's not all, as France demanded control over several territories in Italy, most notably Rome. From this moment forward, Austria no longer exists, it's now Turkey. A final territorial change would be discussed as the coalition came to a deal regarding North America. All great powers would support a British reconquest of the United States, while France would regain Quebec as Prussia got the island of Cuba, renaming it New Romania. To this day, it's unclear why. To get Russia on board, they would be allowed to directly annex the entire Balkan. But Prussia had one final proposal before the Congress closed. We should change the name of the European continent. <laughs> okay, what's yes. your final proposal? Europe your, your your gets renamed to... <laughs> the German Confederation. Uh, That's right, with the final successful proposal, before I called the Congress over, Europe ceased to exist, instead becoming the German Confederation, completing Prussia's goal for the Congress. So now, we look upon the grateful continent of the German Confederation, masterfully redrawn by five of the biggest diplomatic minds of YouTube I could gather. I must be honest, I think we did a far better job than those phonies in real life. I fully expect peace to hold forever. After all, if everyone is overpowered, no one will be. So this is the situation that we leave the German Confederation in as the diplomats, after a hard day's work, go to cool off. Ah, uh, who wants beer? I want beer. So this is the first congress and it was absolutely amazing to do. So obviously we are planning to do way more in the future. The next one that's planned is to roleplay the treatise of Versailles and the others that ended World War I. Though we will try to keep it a bit more serious that time. Let us know what you thought of this video and what you would like to see us do next and check out the excellent channels of my friends who joined. Click on the video on screen now to see the raw, unedited footage of the five of us running the congress. It's a lot of fun to watch. Thank you all for watching and goodbye.